Hey y'all, welcome to It's Not My Fault, the OASG podcast is not popular. I'm Helen, and it's still not my fault that this podcast isn't popular. Uh, my name is Justin, it is totally my fault that this podcast is not popular. Aww. I, did, did we say it's not my fault this podcast is not popular just enough? Mm, we've said it a lot, but we're going to have to keep saying it a lot since it is the title. <sighs> Let's just get to the episode, how about that? Oh, and a quick note, if people can hear any random noises from my end... I don't know what the heck my neighbors are doing on the other side of this closet, but I think they might be installing in an art an art gallery, given how much hammering they've been doing over the past 24 hours. So if you hear that, we're trying to be professional, but I have no control over my neighbors. Hey, it's just like how you always hear those siren sounds from, from where I'm at. Mm-hmm. There's no we can do about that. That's just what happens when you live in civilization, folks. Speaking of what's been happening, I've, I've actually found some time to watch stuff in the past two weeks. Lots of stuff, actually. Yeah, I'm looking at this list of what you finished up, and holy cow, Justin. You watched yeah. everything. No, that's not true. Um, yeah, okay, just to let you guys know, um, Showa Gamaku Rakugo Shinju was not the only winter anime that I watched. It is one of the best, but I did watch a couple others. Um... I guess we're going to start with the bad first, (laughs) just to get that out of the way. Uh, I guess for the most part, like, I didn't mind what I watched in general. There were probably worse things that I could have watched in the winter season. But there were two that were just, that definitely stood out from the other stuff that I actually kind of liked. The first that I'm going to kind of just talk about super quickly uh, is Yamishibai. Um... Yamishibai is actually has been actually a really good short. It's like a horror thing where it it's like the um as as the title is Yamishibai like short horror children's stories um, or scary stories. I should be more accurate. Um, and seasons one and seasons one and two were okay. Season three was really good. Like that was that was the best of the that was probably the best out of all of them. Like I could probably just watch that all all over again. Season 4 was by far the worst season of Yamishibai, period. And I feel like, like I've heard that as period. well from uh, the people at Otaku No Radio. I feel like I've seen them saying that on their Twitter feeds, and they like the show so much they did a multi-hour podcast on it. So. Like, like there, it's not even as, it's not, it's not, ne- not nearly as scary, or even like remotely as scary as the past couple seasons. They tried to do, like, I, I can tell they were going with some experimental stuff, like they would have like scenes where they have the draw the the actual art or actual scenes happening, but then they will actually go to real life with certain scenes where you might have like a hand of a, a hand of a real person enter into the scene with the the narrator talking over it. Um, it was just awkward just to see that, and it, I don't think it helped. It didn't really help at all. I just heard it. Um, the ending is by far, the ending song is by far the worst too. <laughs> Like um, the last, like like last season's um, or, or the se- season three's, and it was creepy. It was like uh, it was like it's hard to describe, but it was definitely it fit the tone of Yamishibai. When you hear the ending of Yamishibai uh, season four, it does not fit at at all. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just ba- it's it's just battle around, and it's really disappointing. Um, I would just recommend that if you that you should totally watch Yamishibai, but just skip season four. That's my recommendation. And that one's still airing, right? Like they just started up the fifth season nope. for the spring. No, it's 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 ending. Oh, okay. It's ended. It's done. Uh, as far as I've noticed, it usually airs in the winter time. And I, and, oh, and I thought it was a year-round show for some reason. Okay. It's always a la- it's always seems like a last minute announcement. Like I don't think I heard there was going to be Yamishibai season t- uh, season four to like December or November. It's probably because it's really sh- it's really short and stuff like that, but as far as I know, it's been like a yearly, yearly thing, not 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 a continuing thing. It's just for one season. But hopefully, if they do another season, this will be. I hope it'll be a million times better because this was this was a bad season. <laughs> the other um, bad show that I watched was Fuka. <laughs> I've um, heard about how that was not so good. Yeah, yeah. Coming to you from I, a not so good t- manga. Yeah, and you read the. You say you read the uh, a couple chapters of that, right? Or you just read the first chapter? I'm pretty sure I've got a review of it on the site, so that would mean one volume. No, no, you probably don't. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> hmm. Well, 
if you go to the OSG.com, you'll find, you'll see if you can search it and find it. Yeah, I'm pretty but, sure um, I said something along the lines of, I thought this was going to be a sports manga, but instead it's a band idol singing manga, and I was disappointed. Huh, what made you think that? Like, the cover image and, like, the summary I thought I'd heard of it made me think it was a sports thing. I might have just been heard, I might have just heard, from the creator of Suzuku, which was a sports manga. Yeah, Suzuka, yeah, that was the uh, sports manga. Uh, but the track romance thing, yeah. See, classic mistake this on is, my side. This this is the, um, well, the the cover basically gives it away. She has headphones, the, the main character, Fuka, has headphones on. No, Justin, that's just coding to show that she's isolated and not social and hard to approach. Uh, I mean, I mean she that does is her make some so. friends. <laughs> I mean, she kind of does make some friends. It's just that she seems very... Like, uh, I guess not really mean spirited, but like, doesn't like really talk that well to the main character. Um, but okay, that, enough enough distractions. Um, yeah, Fuka. To me, I kind of enjoyed the, or at least at the start, I didn't mind the the dueling like musical situation. We have Fuka, and you have uh, Koyuki. Um, the main character calls her Tama, uh, Tama-chan, and I personally didn't mind that. And then I already expected that, yeah, this is gonna be. You see, who's it gonna be between her and them? But I gonna. But two things really ended up like killing this show, aside from uh, Seo Koji's usual habits. Um, I guess the one is the main character is literally the worst character I've probably watched in like the last two or three years. Holy. <laughs> he is. He is very. It, it, and they kind of try to redeem him at the end, but his personality and everything is so annoying and ugh. It is it, it literally makes it hard to watch. Yeah, I'll talk about this later, but because there's another main character that's almost that has almost the same traits, but it's so much more livelier. Although it may depend on the certain characters, but I'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, he is. Re it is really annoying, and then. Even though I can, I, I, it makes sense, in a sense. But uh, I'm pretty sure you you might have heard of the, um, the changes uh, the anime made compared to the manga. Correct? Yeah, there's a major event in the manga, and the anime is like we're leading up to it, we're leading up to it. No, we're going in the other direction, leaving fans going, wait, what the heck? Yeah. So literally, it it, it kind of in a way it kind of sucks because like. That's the, that's the last thing I wanted to know, where they clearly changed it, like, clearly changed, because sorry, it's a spoiler the manga, like, that's, it's like, wow. But it was kind of a bad plot event in the manga to start with, so. Yeah, that's the thing, and it also, it literally, it, it's, it might be because I literally just finished it, but it took me back to Shirobako, <laughs> when um, they ended up having that situation where they had to, to talk with the author and come to a conclusion that wait, this is closer to the end. We can't have somebody dying like this. So when this situation in Fuka popped up, I immediately thought sure about <laughs> is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it sounds like the director, when he first read Fuka, uh, the manga, I think before he was even tapped to direct, it thought, oh, I kind of wish we could do the story a little differently. And it sounds like the manga actually was on board with the changes they made. So it probably didn't have anything like Shirobako's um, interesting infiltration attempt to actually talk to the um, manga. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like yeah, that's the thing. Like they, they talked with the author, and I, I, I literally like apparently the author got a lot of fan fan notes from that. Yeah. And that may have, that swayed his opinion. Um, but on that note, I feel like it's tough to say, but it probably might have been in the best interest to change it because at there, it was literally happening episode ten, and it literally is super sudden. Like it just—it's like ran, it's so freaking random. I can only imagine how it was in the manga. Although I, I bet you it was set up better in the manga than it was in the anime. Well, I mean, you but could like, always watch it. You could always read it on Crunchyroll.com. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I'm just go just watching the anime, <laughs> and um, but yeah, but the big problem is like it basically changes the tone, and then it doesn't really end. I mean, it it gets things together a little bit, but it just feels a little weaker in general i don't know why um you would think that oh i mean everybody's getting back together or stuff like that but i guess it just it just changes the the, the character progression 
and also the mentality because like in the manga like obviously everybody knows that that Fuka is dead but in the anime she's alive but the thing is they don't know that she got literally got hit, she literally got hit by a truck they don't know this for they don't know this for the rest of the, the rest of the, the, the for the last two episodes they don't know at all so they have no idea why she's acting the way she acts in the end so it was a little annoying in that sense. Justin, you're the one who didn't want me talking about your name spoilers, and then you just go out and flat out say what Fuka did. Look, look, look. We're the the, the fact that they that this it's it's an unusual situation where this was a big this was kind of a big story. Like it's one thing for you. I know, I know your name, but this is a little bit different from that personally. It's a little different from say. the highest grossing anime also, film ever. Also. Also, um, and that too, in that sense, and then also, it's it's not quite as good. I'm going to assume it's not quite as good as your name. Your name is, is pretty good, so this sounds like a safe this, assumption. This is um, it's just disappointing. Like um, I, I I guess I have nothing more to say aside from this could have been a little bit better, but it's not. It it just doesn't it doesn't do anything all that interesting, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, it does some things interestingly, like I mentioned earlier with the idol duality and stuff, but not enough, interestingly. I only saw one kind of disappointing show this season since I was watching so few shows. Um, Blue Exorcist came back after like a five-year break in between the anime series, and I was really sad when the first season of the anime aired since um, it stopped right before this arc, the Kyoto arc, which was my favorite arc in the manga up till then. I just really liked it. But I actually went back and I read part of the manga for some of this art because I thought it had cut out a couple scenes, and I was right, it did cut out a couple scenes. And I realized I just liked the manga version of this better. The pacing felt a little more consistent. Um, Again, there were some scenes that were cut out from the anime, which I felt liked did some of the characters a disservice. So I just didn't end up liking this sequel as much as I hoped, which makes me really sad. And also, it's really sad when you've got these long-running shounen manga, which all get, like, 13-episode seasons. It's like, guys, that is just kind of inherently going against how these long-form shounen manga work. <laughs> oh, I'll admit, this um, season did have, like, an anime original ending scene, kind of. They didn't make a new ending, but there's, like, a nice scene between uh, the two brothers. And I thought that was actually really well done. I felt like that was actually a really good ending. <laughs> Well, especially considering the animosity that kind of uh, occurred for most of the season. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, this isn't how they were acting in the manga, but this is a, a right way to have them act, to have them wrap up the season. Also, Yukio is just kind of an ass. Like, it's funny, when I was watching this season, it was when I was reading a lot of Noragami, and um, Yukio and Blue Exorcist and Kazuma and Noragami look almost identical. They even had the same voice actor in their animes. But it was really interesting to see how they look similar, sound similar, and even have somewhat similar personalities, but I just really like how Cosmos handled so much better than Yukio's, and I'm like, I should do an essay on this at some point. Sometime. I'm gonna hold you to that. No, I'm gonna put it on my blog. I'm gonna put it on my blog. <laughs> no! <laughs> Unless you want me to give you even more things to edit. No, nah, that's good. That's good. It's it's fine. It's fine. Um, Justin sounds so disappointed. Then... then <laughs> um, well, I... I, I've been meaning to read the manga, honestly, so... For Blue Exorcist or Noragami? Really like yeah, I'm um, sorry, Blue Exorcist. Okay. Um, so I can't really say for sure, but I did... It, it might be because I didn't read the manga, but I still kind of liked this season. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Exorcist. I just felt like the manga did it better. Right. Uh, the only couple of things that I didn't like was, like, there were some really big fight scenes, and I don't know if it was just, like, Crunchyroll's player, but I think it was... or. I believe Aniplex is, like, kind of providing the video for this um, on Crunchyroll. But, like, there were certain points in the in the, in the shows where it would get super dark and you can't see anything. And I'm just like, oh, my oh, God. Oh, you mean with, like, I explosions can't. and stuff like that? Yeah. That's like, actually... Was, like, somebody... I know the reason why behind these things. Okay. So, you know that episode of Pokemon that gave kids seizures? Uh-huh. Actually, after that, they changed some of the... Um, broadcasting requirements in Japan so that you can't have really bright scenes of explosions and stuff like that. And so people, they always have to dim it down for the TV release, and then they brighten it back up for the Blu-ray and DVD releases. You can see this all over the place. Like, I remember it coming up a lot in the Fate series. Hmm. Oh, Fate Zero. Oh, like Fate Zero, right, right, okay. um, Fate Stay right, Night, okay. all that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm. 
Okay, I'll take. I have to take your word from it. So I don't think we can this. actually blame Crunchyroll or Aniplex this time. I think we have to blame the Japanese okay. government. Okay. <laughs> why you Japanese government? <laughs> but um, or why you Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. But um, I guess aside from that, um, as you mentioned, it did feel like some character um, interactions were cut, like um. Like the sis, uh, I don't know. Within the manga, did they highlight the sisters a little bit more? The snake sisters? Um, not really. They focused yeah. on mainly just the um, the one who was the main actor in all of this. Okay, um, it did feel like uh, some things were cut. Like I can't say exactly for sure, but some things, like some traditions, felt a little bit awkward at certain points. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, like there are moments where I was just like, "Ryuji's dad, please don't die, please don't." Um, like there are some moments where I was really into what was happening, um, even though like I, and I, like uh, there were like that part where um, when ended up pulling out the sword finally, it felt really cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> it felt super cheesy, but like it, it was fine. Like I I still was glad that Blurtis was back, and it was definitely one of uh, my favorite favorites of the season. Um, and just a uh, just a, for Mike, just a quick uh, little. Overall, what I did also like um, Gabriel Dropout, which I've talked about enough on the podcast. <laughs> um, Justin it's just good. has a thing for it's angels. Funny. It's funny or fallen angels. Um, that was good. Akiba's trip. Uh, it kind of slumped down the stretch, but it's still kind of goofyish. Really fun stuff. Um, Sarwin was my substitute. It's the lighter substitute as my scum of scum's wish. Is that is this the one where the guy dates like three different girls in the series or something? Yeah, yeah. I just kept seeing screenshots like, of that on Twitter, and it looks so awkward. More like it's more like it's basically copying of of a show called Photocano, where oh, Photocano God. basically had yeah, basically it had like the main character interact with four different girls and like or. Is it four different girls? Well, I don't remember. Um, it basically, a, a, a couple of girls in different arcs, and it, and Sarah does a lot better. <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean it's actually quite that great. And then I guess compared to Scum's Wish, well, <sighs> hmm, like it's high school type of thing, but not as crazy like dark like Scum's Wish is. Um, like the way that people talk seem a little bit better than most of your standard harem shows, so it's a lot more enjoyable. And I was bringing up the main character in Fuka. Uh, the main character in Saren is a lot like him, except that he actually feels like he is not as bland as he is. <laughs> like he actually, and it helps that the girls around him that he interacts with are just like they actually have a defined personality that is more interesting. The only thing is, some don't. Some aren't as much of a fan of it, a fan of Saren because it's like Amagami, uh, like the Amagami series, and it makes sense because the director of that of that show is directing Saren. I didn't watch Amagami, so I have no idea how that how it is. That might be why I kind of like Saren a lot. And like, if there's another season of it, I would totally watch it. Um, but yeah, I can see like there was some there was some uh, there was definitely some times where it went too far. <laughs> But um, I thought it was a nice show. Um, interview was interview was Monster Girls, which got way better after his first episode. Um, Again, I don't know. T- I was looking at screenshots on Twitter, and some of it was like, "If a succumbus, you know, seduces men, it's all her fault. Even she didn't mean to do it." And it's like, wow, that is some blatant victim shaming there. I can use this as a straw man <laughs> example. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, well, I guess the thing is like what in the in the one that con- well, if you see context, you're not if you see just the regular co- pictures, uh, it could be taken out of context. I saw a lot of pictures. Um, I felt like I saw the whole context. <laughs> hmm. I guess we we'll have to. Well, yeah, we'll just have to disagree. I guess like the way it was executing the episode wasn't it didn't, it didn't feel like it was super, super sleazy or anything like that. And then I guess the other thing is like it's focusing on trying to help the monster girls. Um, like there was points where the teacher who's trying to learn about them was helping out so much that this actually caused a little bit of a, of a stir within the within the, the school. Um, 
Like, there was some good... I felt like there was some good moments in the show, which is surprising, because I didn't think after the first episode it was going to get any interesting, any more interesting, but it did. So, I personally liked it. I thought it got better. Let's see. I thought that Akka got better as it went on, which is kind of funny, since it's a very quietly paced show in some ways. I've seen a lot um, of people... Yeah, I've seen a lot of people better. describing it as, like, the world's most laid-back coup attempt, and it's like, yeah. But it works! <laughs> Does it work? I only watched the first episode. I, I've been meaning to watch more, but that first episode was super slow. Yeah, it's like around episode three is when I started getting more interested, since I'm like, oh, okay, I'm starting to see the pieces here. I'm kind of interested in how they fit. And yeah, the characters started clicking for me. I got used to the designs. Um, I will still admit that the black, white, and red combination does unfortunately look rather fascist, but I don't actually think it was the intention, having seen the whole show yet. And um, I really liked it, and it was like kind of an unusual thing. So do you think, oh, military coups was happening in stories all the time, but A, I'm not so sure, and B, the reasoning behind it and the way that it goes about happening definitely felt um, different to me. And I kind of also want to write an essay on this about how, like, Akka's almost like America of all these different nations existing within one nation and trying to, like, outdo each other all the time, because that is pretty much the U.S. Helen's essays. Looking forward to reading them. <laughs> Are you are you gonna be able to? Wait? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, you you, uh, you can't um, disagree with me there. I mean, we've got like Texas trying to secede every other year. I mean. <laughs> um. Okay. Just to finally, I guess, wrap up. Or no, you still have. Um. That wasn't the only other show you watched, right? Or finished? No, I also finished um, Maid Dragon, which I also really liked. I remember needling you earlier in the podcast season earlier in the year anyway about May Dragon yeah, yeah I still really liked it towards the end it definitely had some unfortunate moments where you've got a lady with very big boobs tormenting a young boy named Shoda and it's like oh my god stop being so gross mm-hmm. but I really liked it in the end and I decided if I ever date a girl we're gonna do a couple's cosplay of Toru and Kobayashi just gotta do it you mean you're gonna force her to only if we want to cosplay <laughs> yeah 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 cos um, yeah gotta be don't force people to cosplay. It's not worth it. But yeah, I finished all those, and then I saw Your Name just the other night, which obviously isn't a winter anime, but um, just came out this weekend here in the U.S., finally. Well, yeah, we could, we could consider it like a winter-ish anime, right? I don't know, Justin, it kinda, it's it April, it ain't winter it te- anymore. It te- it te- technically speaking, it was airing in theaters, certain theaters in March. Really? Where? I'm going to give you a guess. It, it, should I give you a hint? Is it New York? Yes, that's one. Did you see it in New York? No. <laughs> San Francisco, um, it, it, Los it, it, Angeles. It, it, no, no. It, it aired at the Children's Festival. Oh, okay. The, the, yeah. <laughs> so we could technically count it as winter. But anyway, yeah, I saw it. I saw it subtitled since I didn't want to see the dub that much. And the theater I saw it at was thoughtfully, I guess, showing like one dubbed showing and then three subtitled showings a day. And I really ended up enjoying it um, a lot, although the, like, half spoiler I'd seen, or I thought I'd seen before the movie, actually turned out to be correct. So I spent the whole movie going, is this, ah, mm-hmm, okay, yep, I was right, I was right. <laughs> um, well, how's this stack, well, I haven't seen it yet, um, hope, I will try to, I guess, I don't know. Well, now that- You should see it. My work, my work schedule is kind of lightening up, so maybe I can find some time for it. Um, well, how do you- hmm. How do you think it steps up compared to the other Shinkai movies? I've never actually liked a Shinkai film before this one. Gasp! I mean, I'm that weird... Not even five centimeters? I'm that weird person who kind of half liked A Place Promised in our early days and has an equal amount of like and dislike for children who chase lost voices, but that's it. I, what? I couldn't stand five centimeters at all. What? Okay, one, you actually kind of like children who chase lost voices? I know, I'm so ashamed of myself. And then two, well, okay, I can kind of get why you don't like five centimeters, but 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 it's five centimeters, dude. It's entirely romance. That's like the opposite of what I am. <laughs> but okay, um, well, so you say you like your name better. Okay, mm-hmm. that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's really easy to it, see it, why this has appealed to so many people. It hits a lot of the commercially right notes, I guess to say. Even the visuals aren't quite as um, auteur as they usually are. They're a little more conventional, although still really gorgeous. 
there aren't that many feet shots, but there is like this one reoccurring shot, which is like a door opening scene from foot level. And I'm like, well, what the heck is up with that shot, Shanghai? Why did you decide that you liked this Look. particular shot so much? Look, I mean, Garden of Words was a masterpiece in foot like the theater. So, I mean, he, he couldn't just let it go, you know? Yeah, you can stop playing footsie. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, your name sounds sounds. I, I, I've been hearing some. Well, obviously, it's been like tearing up Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it, I guess it's gonna. It's got to do kind of the same thing here. Um, yeah, I definitely accused yeah. a friend that they were going to cry before they saw the movie, and the next morning I woke up to a subtweet saying, "Yes, I did cry." So. <laughs> If you're the kind of person who cries at all during movies, you will probably cry during this movie. <laughs> My theater was just like half groaning by the end, going, oh, this is such a Shinkai was moment. Your uh. full? Was your theater full? Uh, it was somewhere between like half and three fourths full. The only reason why I see this is because I saw um, a picture on Twitter where there was literally apparently one person in one theater. Oh, I, th I think that might be a friend of mine as well. So yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, my theater definitely, um, I saw it opening day here, definitely was not empty at all. Um, although also, like, D.C. is a surprisingly nerdy city. And this was shown at a sort of art house theater? I don't know, it's like, a, it's like D.C.'s weird mixture between being art house and being upscale enough they sell crab cakes at the concession stand, so... Okay. D.C. is weird. Okay. No, DC sounds amazing. I need to go there one day. Especially for Otacon. I mean, I never said that the weirdness was bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we should probably move on to some main topics, even though there's, like, other anime that I watched. Spoilers, guys. Like, it's mostly, mostly licensing news again. Yes, more licensing news. Yay. Um, at Anime Boston, Viz made a lot of announcements. We're only going to cover some new ones. Yeah, God, because even doing this podcast every two weeks, we still can't keep up with the amount of licenses coming out these days, especially in yes. manga. Yes. So, like, literally, like, and, and I think Helen has an interesting story about this one. Uh, the one that interested me because how the art style looked like was um, Abi Umeda's Children of the Whales. Um, yeah, the art reminded me that, a little bit of um, the art from Tagami Bachi, actually, if you look at the colored images with the uh, distinctive coloring schemes. Hmm, makes you wonder if he was an assistant. Or, uh, sorry, I can't assume it's just he could be a she. Uh, maybe the person worked as an assistant I under think the Abe Tagami is Bachi. usually a guy's name, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna... Not sure, not gonna say for sure. Um, but yeah, that was... That title was one, and the Emperor and I, that interested me. Uh, but you noted... There was something that you noted about the Children of the Whales license? <laughs> um, I follow some accounts for people who work um, for manga companies on Twitter, like their personal accounts. And I saw people from at least two different companies going, No, damn it, that's who got that! <laughs> Which actually makes me more interested, because I looked at it and I was going, eh, but now that I'm seeing that, like, three different groups, all of fairly different tastes, wanted to license this, I'm like, okay, now I'm kind of interested. Yep, yep. and you, you listeners should be interested in it, too. If, if, if it's that level, if, that's, if, it, if these companies want it, that means it must be something, something special you hope, right? Yeah, you hope, anyway. And also for mm -hmm. the Emperor and I, I did not realize. I was like, wait, but didn't Viz already license this one? Is like the this is the penguin manga, right? And you had to tell me that no, they have a different penguin living up a person I manga. <laughs> like I almost I, I didn't even realize that until I, was, I looked at it. As, oh, that's what you're talking about. But no, it's it's completely different. It's not the same. <laughs> if you can think of it, there are at least three manga about it. Yeah. Um Okay, um they also licensed um SP Baby. Uh, I think that was the Jose manga. Yeah, and I was looking kind of interested. Um, I thought it looked kind of interesting, but some of my friends who read more Jose manga than I do, a lot of Japanese stuff, were like, no, 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 so okay then. I will <laughs> expect to be disappointed when I eventually try it. Oh, okay. Um, this Lights is a light novel. They do that occasionally. Yes. Um, Nisu, Nis, Nisi Olsen and Hikaru Nakamura's Junji, Juni Tyson. Zodiac Warriors. I don't. I didn't even know what that was. I don't know anything about this one. <laughs> All I know is that wait. Um, as far as I know, Viz doesn't really license that much light novels. So um, this is. Um, I feel like this is a, a new thing, right? Mm, like I said, they've done it before a couple of times, but not super often. The only thing I know is that like they have the hike. Uh, hike uh, Saru. 
Paikusora print, I believe that's what it's called. They've also that had print no, publishing. Like the spin off light novels for stuff like um, Full Metal Alchemist and I think Naruto as well. Yeah, plenty of Naruto light novels, yes. Um, I can't believe my Naruto manga is getting a light novel! Yay! Um, speaking of that, they also license more Naruto, but I don't have to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can totally find out for yourselves. Um, I guess the big thing is. Um, I think they're gonna bring in. I believe they're bringing in. Uh, are they bringing in Astro Lost in Space in the Promised Neverland um, imprint? Definitely the Promised Neverland. Um, they put up a release date for it earlier today. I think the release date's in December for the first volume imprint. But yeah, they've been tweeting out um, for a couple of titles. The ones I was paying attention to were Astro Lost in Space and the Promised Neverland. They said, like, um, digital first or something along those lines. And then they deleted the tweet and then reworded it a bit more clearly to go. Oh, okay. It looks like they will be bringing these out in print as well. Yeah. Um, Which makes me excited because I like those manga, so I want to own physical copies of them because I do not fully really trust online-only manga services. <laughs> right, right. Um, and I guess the last um, this thing that they well, it's not really. A, I guess you could say it's licensed, but it's really. I won't. I won't really call it a license. But um, hey, you know that Death Note has been like really popular, and um, it's like the international phenomenon and all that good stuff. And I guess Viz really wanted to celebrate it in the best way possible. That is putting literally all thirteen volumes into, into one big, big book. So now you can kill like, people two ways with the Death Note. You can either write their name in the Death Note, or you can use the Death Note as a blunt um, trauma weapon. Like. Uh, literally, the first question I asked is, or thought of, was, "Where are you? Where are we putting this? <laughs> how are we like? How is how is like even gonna be? Is that even gonna fit on a bookshelf?" I saw several people, again, manga people, co- quoting, "Man, how are you gonna make that binding work? It's gonna crack immediately in multiple places." Yeah, this, this is twenty four hundred appro- pages. Like I fit, like I feel like it's like one of those like messy like burger sandwiches where you gotta put it in it's really big and you have a lot of toppings and stuff on it and you gotta put it in your mouth but like where do you attack it from how do you like how do you what's the game plan when I see this Death Note Omnibus what's the game plan (laughs) how am I supposed to read it hey Justin do you even lift bro like you know do you lift like you know two volumes of Death Note at a time do you lift three Omnibus volumes at a time or (laughs) I go for the workout plan, which is carry multiple volumes of Gundam The Origin around at all times, but... <laughs> this is gonna be the... This is the weirdest thing ever. Um, I will totally okay, try to figure out how to make a blog post about those. Okay. Okay, and by the way, that's right. That's three articles that Helen is supposedly aiming to white. Just let it, putting it out The last there. one I definitely would do there. for the sites. So. <laughs> um, I guess it's a, I guess if you're a really hardcore Death Note fan... Or you still don't have the manga? I guess you can get it, but I like I have the black editions already. I don't I don't need it. Yeah, I feel like most fans probably already have the manga one way or another. Yeah, I really just feel like it's capitalizing on the Netflix thing. Yeah, and speaking of omnibuses, um, there were other companies making manga announcements this week, but the one I noticed was Seven Seas is putting out in this corner of the world an omnibus edition. Uh, that's um, the manga which got turned into a movie recently by MAPPA that released last year in Japan, and it actually did pretty well. It had a long tail. And I remember two years ago at the Otakon panel, um, the director of MAPPA said they would do, like, a premiere at Otakon, so I'm holding, holding them to it this year. Oh, man. Nothing's been announced yet, but I'm remembering this. I am remembering this. <laughs> yes, I was just had a couple of announcements, didn't they? Yeah, they had some more stuff, but nothing that really caught my eye, so I wasn't paying attention as much. Uh, one was like from the author of the Nightmare Inspector, I think it was called, and then the other one was from an anime that I did watch, Anti Magic uh, Academy. <laughs> that show was kind of bad. <laughs> I'm trying to remember because you say that, and I'm thinking of like five shows at once. I'm like, which one of these is it? <laughs> uh, let's see, 35th Platoon. Um, this is so long. This is a while ago. I can't remember the show. It was bad, so it was like I can't. <laughs> it was bad. Don't think about it. Yeah, but yeah, they licensed that. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and I guess also Jade Novel Club put out another light novel license. Um, 
from the creator of um, Outbreak Company, which is a solid, solid series. And Ch uh, Chaka, the Coffin Princess, which I haven't watched yet. I think um, I think both the manga and the light novels have been licensed by the um, by Yen Press. Yen Press. Yep. Um, uh, I think it's just the manga for yeah. I Chaka. think it's just the manga, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's just the manga. The anime is licensed and stuff like that. Um, Blue Steel Blasphemer. I don't know if it's any good. But like at least the, the the history suggests that maybe it'll be something. That is a word salad title. It really is. <laughs> say that five. Say that five. Um, five times fast. Blue steel blasphemer. Whatever. Blue steel blasphemer. Blue steel blasphemer. Blue steel blasphemer. Blue steel blasphemer. Good job. Yeah. Good job, Helen. Good job. Yeah, and then on the anime licensing side of things, I guess you would say um, VRV, which is also Violation Crunchyroll's parent company. It's another kind of streaming app is streaming um, a couple of titles. Um, oh, I think one is, has the most light novel title ever. What do you do at the end of the world? Are you busy? Will you save us? And then Akashic Records. Isn't that the one that's like Akashic Records of a Bastard Instructor or something? Yep, it's the title that Seven Seas has licensed. You see, this is why I can't remember which patches are which. I'm like, they all have just these... You would think it'd be easier to remember odd titles like that, but when you have so many odd titles, it actually just gets harder. Yeah. I'm pretty sure a significant thing here is, uh, is I guess this is like a separate thing from Crunchyroll where Verb is actually bringing anime onto their site. I guess, since I've looked at the website version a few times, and I know you can subscribe to like different channels on there, like Crunchyroll, like Funimation, but I haven't experimented with it yet. Like, um, I guess disclosure time. I was uh, one of the people that was on the beta version of it. <gasps> like, you could get it on your um, phone and watch it there um i was trying to be interested in it but i really like if if you're really into nerd stuff i get it will probably be a service for you but i'm literally not like into any of the other stuff that was on the the service it was just crunchyroll and i guess funimation that was it yeah i know they've also um, got things from i think both nerdist and geek and sundry yeah and then the big the detriment to me is that i I actually prefer just watching stuff on the website, yeah. which I'm glad now that there are there is a website version of it. So that's more appealing to me than watching it either on my on my phone. Um, so yeah, I didn't personally like it, but like now that we have these changes, it might be more appealing now. And then if they are going to license some anime titles, that's pretty useful, helpful as well. Yeah, at least they're not all locked up like the anime strike titles. Um, wow, we're already st we're already starting there already. Um, so I guess we should get to the main topic, shouldn't we? Anime strike. Blah. All right, let's get to the main topic. <laughs> um, all right, you posed the question, or actually, we should be we should set it up. Actually, you posed um, the question. I answered first with some words I'm not allowed to say on this podcast. Okay. Um, oh yeah, you're right. It, it's been a while. <laughs> um, so yeah, if, if in the past couple of weeks, uh, Sentai has uh, been li uh, putting or has been licensing anime titles. Actually, I'm not so sure it's Sentai then, licensing them, but you continue. Well, no, like it's no. Well, they could, they're gonna release it eventually um, in like home outlets, so it's their license. No, no, no. no um, like, but you first continue the question, then I'll say what I think's going on. All right. right, right. Um, so yeah, they basically there's titles on their service that are that Sentai has or whatever, but now it's an anime strike and it's only available exclusively on their site. You can't watch it anywhere else in the U.S. Like, if it's, I mean, you can only watch, it's exclusively for the U.S., so you can probably, if you're in, like, in other countries, you can, might be able to watch it from some other company, but if you're in the U.S., you can't watch any of the titles. They have a lot of titles this season, so it begs the question, is this a, is, is Sentai X and Anime Strike a thing? And is it a good thing? It's certainly a thing. <laughs> And what I'm thinking is that the fact that they're Amazon Strike exclusives makes me think that it's probably a Amazon has licensed them and they are sub-licensing the physical release. Because otherwise, all ad revenue that Sentai would get from streaming would go back, um, well, it wouldn't go exclusively back to them, but you know, streaming in more places, more ad revenue, more revenue for them. So it wouldn't make any sense for Sentai to then stream exclusively on Anime Strike unless Amazon A gave them a lot of money, or B, if the license was coming from Anime Strike slash Amazon to start with. So I think a Sentai is probably the sub-licensor here, but hmm. no confirmation on know. this yet. 
just in your the report. The only reason why is, so. the only reason why is because they since I they confirmed to me they do they do have some of their t- some titles already like done. Um, um, it's not my fault. Um, the the dungeon anime, the the first sword Oratoria is it wrong to pick up a girl, um, girls in the dungeon? Well, okay, is it wrong to pick up girls? But they have like they have a couple of uh, Sentai titles already on Amazon's site. So yeah, but I think that's <sighs> a little different. Like, are we talking about hmm. the first season of that or the new season? Yeah, yeah it's the first season. Yeah, it's for the first season, season, I yeah. think that Sentai does have like the master license to it, and they have sub license, or they're not especially sub licensing it out, but they're putting the video on Amazon. But I think in the case of the spin off that's airing this season, Sword Ortoria, I suspect Amazon has the master license for it. Hmm. I don't know if they're. That I, is my armchair speculation. The only reason why the only reason why I'd say that is because isn't um oh yeah what's happening to Caponeri? Mm, I think Sentai is going to put it out digital um physically. No, it can't. It can't because it was licensed by Crunchyroll, and they said they was going to release it, and then they teamed with Funimation. Uh, so if I'm not mistaken, isn't Funimation? Putting it out, Ooh, I don't remember since I didn't care about See, that this show. Is where, so. This is why this is this is kind of why I wonder about where at this Amazon thing. So I don't know if they're like the mass licensee of of any of the titles that Sentai is giving them. I, I just personally think Sentai is is going to have it on their site, and they're going to eventually release. And Sentai Filmworks is going to release it in stores at some point, either this year, late this year, or next year. We'll go do an interview with them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've tried to, like, get some sort of information out of them, but there's no dice, literally. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's, um... Y'all, the anime industry is complicated. Very complicated, as we just ex- elaborated. Um, okay, here is my personal thoughts on this. Before you go... <laughs> I, I think we've already made um, my thoughts clear on this, so... Um, so, literally... It is a good. It is a good thing in a sense that there is another competition for Crunchyroll Funimation because it literally was just Crunchyroll Funimation. Like they can't like. It's just how unfortunately it's just it's a business. Businesses need to make money. Blah blah blah. There has to be some competition. And if Sentai feels like having a relationship with Anime Strike would help them, then it is what it is. The big problem is anti. Um, Anime Strike service is very bad. <laughs> it's really hard like, to search on the I, website like for it, the things, and they don't have a free option at all, not even a delayed yeah. release thing. And I think yeah. that um, I think that because of this, a lot of people in other countries aren't getting all the licenses. I think I've seen some no, folks on the UK saying that they haven't, haven't gotten all the series. Um, I believe com- um, I believe companies elsewhere can license those titles. They just like it just can't be shown like in the US. Or like uh, Canada, if I'm not mistaken, but other companies like in the UK or France or, or any of those places, they can totally they can take they can license those titles. Like Anime Lab can license a title, and they probably already have a title for a service too. But like I, I would have to check. Well, I know some but, of the um, stuff is streaming on, in the UK on Amazon. Like um, Bahamut is, and I think one or two other sequels, but not everything. I wouldn't even compare it to the French market because the French market is pretty different because the French actually like anime. Hey, I thought it was more manga they liked. Why not both? Manga more. Mm. But but okay, but yeah, in general, like the, the competition idea is fine. The actual execution of the service is terrible. Is is bad. Um, this is literally like preventing people from actually watching a show. Because mm-hmm. what you're telling them is that they have to basically pay Amazon Prime, which is ninety nine a year. And then on top of that, they had to buy, pay for the service. And and you can buy Amazon had, Prime per month now, but it's more expensive to do it by month than by year. So if you were trying to yeah. watch it, like just watch like one season of Anime Strike, you're paying $16 a month, which is over twice as much as Funimation, Crunchyroll, I think even Hulu as well. <laughs> and if you and just Netflix. get a verb account, you can, if you just get a verb account, you can watch Crunchyroll and Funimation there for 10, 10 bucks, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so it's cheaper there too. So it's like, what? Why? And now most like um like some titles like Anonymous Noise is uh, is on the service. Um, what else? They've got like uh, nine. They've got Anonymous Noise, Grimoire of Zero, Recreators, Adam the Beginning, Bahamut Two, Kabuki Ku. Uh, I 
think Sakura de Reset, maybe? No, Sakura Reset, uh, Sa- oh, sorry, oh, Sakurada Reset. Yeah, Sakurada Reset. And, um, the second Saikano one, which is the Noitamina show of the season. Yeah, yeah, well, we knew that, we knew they had that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I have no other thoughts aside from MA Strike service needs to be better. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally it, because it's not worth it right now. Yeah, I've got, like, another free trial with them for a week, so I'm just trying to get through everything really fast. Gotta finally finish You're the Great Passage. She... She's basically the uh, Helen is basically the anime sh- Amazon sh- um, Amazon's anime strike reporter. Please, if you have any queries and questions, go to Wondering Dreamer on Twitter. Uh, dot com. Just do that. But only if you get to me before Friday, because that's when my trial runs out. <laughs> um, this podcast may not come out on, on Friday until Friday. Justin. <laughs> um, I'll probably end up subscribing to it later in the season since I really like the opening episode of Bahama 2 and I'm like oh my god I want more of this now right so okay we were already talking a little bit about the spring season with the anime strike how about we actually talk about what we watched in the anime season in general open the floodgates it's a new yes. season of anime Yes. All right, begin, please. Uh, did you ever watch the first season of Bahamut? Uh, Rage of uh, Rage of Bahamut. So yeah. I feel like I have, and I can't remember it at all. Well, if you like the first season, you're really gonna like the second season because it starts out the same kind of bombastic, frantic energy and like really fun action sequences. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm sorry to cut, cut you off. The reason why I'm I'm, I'm, I'm getting it mixed up with Garo for, for some reason. Garo, another uh, another map of show, but very different. Yeah, um, it was the the bridge of Bahamut was the one with the colorful cast of characters, right? Uh, that yeah, that was the one with Favaro and um, shoot, I forget everyone else's name. It's fine. It's been a while. Favaro is the most okay, important okay. character in there. Okay. So. Okay, I, okay, then I know what you're talking about. Okay, then yeah, I, I, I hope I can watch it at some point. Yeah, since it was really fun, and it's the second season in a row where we've got a horny dragon girl, so... Can't, we can't escape dra- horny dragon apparently girls, apparently. not. Apparently this is the new trend, guys. I accept it. Yeah, except I didn't actually realize until it started that it does kind of assume that you remember a lot about the ending of the first show. And the first show came out in, I think, 2014, so I might just go ahead and like try to binge rewatch the whole thing just so I make I'm sure I'm up to date. Right. Yeah, but I've seen that and I've seen a couple other anime strike titles that you probably haven't seen, like Kabuki Ku, which is Let's Form a Kabuki Club. And Helen remembers she likes the look of Kabuki but cannot stand the way they actually talk during Kabuki, so <laughs> it's just very melodramatic, long drawn out noises and I'm like, oh my god, I don't like this. So I saw that and I think those are the only anime strike shows I've seen so far. Uh, there's a couple other things they're going to show, but haven't come out yet, like Anonymous Noise, Grimoire of Zero, and then Adam of the Beginning. Uh, just to let you people know, um, on the OESG site, Helen actually reviewed on, on Anonymous Noise. Yeah, the first manga volume, yeah. Yep, totally go read it. Get 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 her thoughts on it before you watch the anime. And I had someone asking me, should I buy this for my library? Because it sounded like you were kind of meh on I'm like, well, it didn't seem terrible yet, which is good. <laughs> Guys, you'd be surprised how many first manga volumes you read and you go, wow, that was irredeemable. Right. Um, unlike, I, oh, I guess unlike uh, you, I have actually watched that much yet. Um... Like I think the like literally the only sequel show I watched was uh, Attack on Titan season two, which first episode, which is this episode back was just like nuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was only able to watch three shows so far: um, Alice and Zoroku, which I also the Royal saw. Tutor, the Royal Tutor, and Sakura Quest. Um, Alice and Zoroku probably is, is at this moment had the strongest premiere, but that's at this moment. Yeah, I saw the first episode, and I was actually watching the second episode earlier today. I had it on in the background while I was crafting, and I finished up my crafting, and I went, you know what? I have no urge to keep watching this. So that's a soft drop. Really? Yeah. Aw, that's disappointing. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't grabbing my attention. You know, 
older man suddenly has to raise younger girl is something we've seen a lot of in anime recently. Well, in this case, though, this girl clearly has, like, these crazy freaking powers that are not explained at this moment. And you just wonder, like, what was the origin? Like, and what's her real name? Like, who is she? Like, where does she come from? I mean, like... like there's a lot of questions that it asks, and I'm, I'm, I I want to know more, personally. There's plenty of other supernatural stories out there, so I'm like, oh, this just kind of reminds me that I really need to see, like, like, Zetai Karin psychic children someday, <laughs> so... But I personally like that this old man, like, he literally is just like, I don't give a crap about what kind of powers you are. You will not kill these people. <laughs> Stop it. He's like, I don't care Stop what's it. going on around here. You are gonna learn some manners, though, kid. Yeah... So yeah, literally like every it literally hit all the beats for me personally, and I'm really interested to just see if it answers any of the questions it decided to pose. Yeah, since the premiere for the first episode introduced a lot of things, like we have um, look, it pulled off over Rakugo Shinju. It like um, it introduced like our main character. Her name is Sana. Actually, I don't know why she didn't see- no no. It's they uh, and later in this in this show they said that she was named she was told her name was Sana. We still don't know if that's. Well, we're referring to her as that for the moment instead of Alice. But yeah, so she says things like, I want to, like, overturn this entire organization that basically imprisoned me and did tests on me. It's like, wow, that is a tall order for, like, however many episodes you've got. Especially, I think it's based on an ongoing manga, so. Yeah, Uh, which, by the way, Seven Seas license. Further confirming (laughs) Justin's theory that everything that that is getting licensed these days either has an anime in production or will. Pretty much, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, okay. It, it's I, it's. I hope you can pick it up back up at some point, but it's fine if you can't if you don't want to. And I know you also like the Royal Tutor a lot more than I did since I dropped that like five yeah, minutes in. I was like, I, no. I was a little bit surprised. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised. Five minutes is too early. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I don't give a crap about these pre boys at all. And that's the entire point of the show. This co- this is a monthly G fantasy title. That is the entire point of these stories. Dropped. Uh, is it the point? The only reason why, I, I, well, at least because I, if you say you have more experience with the the, the, the where the magazine is, then maybe so. If I'm remembering but right, that's like, the one which also put out. Wait, should I always get? Should I always get um two magazines mixed up? Never mind, I'm not going to say what I think it is. There's like okay, two the shonen one, manga for girl magazines that I always get mixed up, and it's from one of those. Well, the only reason why, like, I feel like this was far more entertaining is because of Professor Heine. He is literally, like, the most lifeless main character you will ever meet. He plays he the Shota archetype basically... here. What's that? He plays the Shota archetype here. Because whenever you have a story about pretty <laughs> boys, everyone must fulfill an archetype. Archetype. Yeah, but, why? Well, I, I guess. But I don't know, his, his, his brand, his, his personality and the voice acting personally works. I don't know. It makes, it actually is kind of funny to me. Like compared to like all these other characters who really believe that they're like the best ever, <laughs> like it's just it's just, it's just crazy personality. Is like what? Mm-hmm. It's very interesting to me. Yeah, but for me, but it was very much me. a story about here is your pick of beautiful boys, ladies who like boys. Choose one to buy all the merchandise for. And, nah. mm, I feel like it's more than that, but I guess I will let you know at the halfway point, which is I guess a couple weeks from now, or. A couple months. I should say a couple months from now, actually. Yeah. And let me know if any of the boys, aside from the professor, has gotten your interest. What's that? And let me know if any of the boys, besides the professor, is now your best boy. Probably not. Um, and the other one I ended up watching was Soccer Quest, which um, I guess you also... Yeah, I also watched that didn't one. Didn't you? Okay. Because certain people on Twitter will not shut up about it. <laughs> well, what's your first thoughts? I wanted this to be more interesting. What is about a girl who was in the country and she went to Tokyo to stick it to her parents and now she can't stick it to her parents? I mean, Justin, you know my family is a farm, right? <laughs> um, you know I was like I'm... half wrestling a goat last weekend to help shear it. I mean, like, okay, the idea of like, of like, oh, I hate the countryside is not something that intrinsically appeals to me. Well, I didn't know about your countryside life. Dude, I posted a picture on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I clearly was not on Twitter that day. Sorry. I apologize. Um, also, I just felt like well, our main girl just didn't have that much of a personality. Like, there were some good moments, but she just felt a little flat. She felt kind of unsure of herself and just... 
It came well, through. I mean, I mean, she's literally been rejected from like thirty jobs. <laughs> I don't think she's been kind of depressed. Dude, I've had worse. <laughs> But yeah, I just felt like it fell a little flat. I'm still going to give it another episode or two, since I really like the look. And there were some truly hilarious moments, like when she gets, gets on the bus and then she just steps off the bus. Look, because there was just a guy with a guitar, that, that should not have gotten her off the bus. Well, he honestly. was making allusions to the bus being a nose and nose hairs, and the way she just locks eyes with him and goes, I'm leaving and steps backwards off the bus. <laughs> I think that was the best part of the episode. <laughs> but yeah, I know it's a PA work show. And I feel like PA Works does dig into the tropes a little too much sometimes. And I, was, and I know this is like their third women working series, and I didn't really like what I saw of Hanasaka Roha, but I did like Shirobako, so I was wondering which one was going to fall closer to for me, so... Hmm. Well, I mean... I personally, well, I mean, I didn't like it quite as much as uh, probably others, but I feel like it's too like it, it's it's still setting up. So it's, I'm 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 curious to see where it's going to go personally. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm still going to give it another episode. But like in the first episode of Shirobako setting up, they show like an impressionistic, you know, optimistic Mia more, and then immediately show her making an ah uh, face, which just resonated with me more. Well, I bet you, though, that, um, and you can tell me if I'm totally wrong, but I, I'm going to assume, like, uh, most of, the, like, if Sakura Quest is, like, their, like, their B title, I guess the, uh, the Eccentric Family is their next title they're working on? Uh, I saw the first episode of Eccentric Family 2 t- earlier today, and I definitely like that a lot. Yeah, I will watch that as soon as I can. <laughs> as soon as we're done with this podcast, Justin, go watch it. Um, I actually might watch, um... My Hero Academia before that. For a second, I thought Sorry. you said I might start watching it while we're recording. I was going to be so offended. <laughs> yeah, My my Hero Academia 2, Eccentric Family 2, um, again, Bahamut 2. Those were all really solid sequels. So I feel like for right now, the st- series I'm most interested in are all sequels. Not much of the new series have just made me. This is not surprising yet. to me. <laughs> because those were such good series to start with, you mean? <laughs> Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, they're already established a good. Why waste time with these new shows? Mm-hmm. Oh, and I did also watch um, the first two-ish episodes of Kado as well. Um, that was another show which had kind of a double-length premiere with an episode zero and an episode one. And I'm, really, like, really mixed on that one. I mean, it doesn't help that they have episode zero, which is a flashback, which helps establish the characters a lot, but it utterly doesn't contribute much to the plot at the end. And it's all like 2D animated, but then as soon as they get to where episode one starts, everything goes back to being like 3D CGI animated, and it's not a very smooth transition. Ouch! Ouch! Yes. I see people saying, "Oh, it's better than Sidonian Agent recently," and I'm like, I don't really know if there's like if it's a difference. It's not much of one at this point. Like Japan just still is not <laughs> advancing really fast here. I'm kind of interested in the story based on the way it's gone so far. Like, in the fir- actual proper first episode, the characters are just so diligent about how they're examining this giant alien cube, which has appeared out of nowhere on an airport runway. And I kind of liked its mindset going forward with that. Especially since they, they went, okay, we've tried everything, let's just shoot a tank at it. Tank round, not an actual tank. They did not catapult a tank at the Mysterious Cube. <laughs> that would be bad. But yeah, so I'm kind of interested in that. I'm definitely going to give it another episode. But at the same time, I'm really not sure what to expect there. And the art is doing it no favors. Uh, <clears throat> well, um... I wonder how many more seasons it will take for show- us to have a CGI anime, which is actually good. What's that? I wonder how many more seasons it's going to take before we have a CGI anime that we actually think looks good. When uh, Japanese studios get like an American um, style budget, mm, maybe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's still some stuff I want to watch, like recreators I want to check out. Although, if it's on Anime Strike, I probably have to wait wait until later. Yeah, it's on Anime Strike. Um, I think there's a couple other stuff that's on Crunchyroll that I want to check out. Um, somebody was suggested Clockwork Planet. I don't know about that show. Didn't look like my thing, so I passed. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but maybe I'll give it a look. Um, and just to just 
put this out there. We're recording this on April 9th, 2017. And this podcast is probably going to go up Thursday and Friday. Um, I still want to watch Little Witch Academia whenever Netflix decides to put it Please up. Please put it up, Netflix. <laughs> um, anytime now, guys. Um, there, There is a uh, audience looking forward to watching it. Honest. Oh, and I know that Netflix got another show this season. It's IDO, I think. It's also all CGI. Wait, what? Yeah, it's um, original stories. Someone on Twitter said, okay, I watched the first episode. It looks like these characters merge their consciousness with robots and then fight in Team Super Sentai style, so... Oh, no. I will, I will oh, watch the first no. episode of that. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Uh, Weird Mecha Shows is one of my things, so... You should just become a mecha expert. No, there's too many people I'd have to compete with. Uh, weird mecha expert. Again, there are still too many people I'd have to compete with. <laughs> but yeah, so, and that also means there's a couple of anime strike tiles which simply haven't aired yet, so we can't talk about them yet. Yeah. I mean, we can't even talk about them in general unless you pay for an account. Yeah, I mean... Well, by I time we were, I can't. By the time we record the next episode, I'll be able to talk about at least Anonymous Noise. Hopefully also Adam and the Grimoire of Zero, but... Uh, I actually don't know when um, Grimoire of Zero is airing. I haven't checked. We'll find out at some point. Mm-hmm. Well, at least we've got a lot of stuff to look forward to, I guess. Yes. Well, we hope. <laughs> We've got the sequels at the very least, so... They'll make a good season. That's true. That is very true. And we know stuff like My Hero Academia is actually getting um, two cores this time around, which is great. And I'm trying to remember if Bahamut's getting two cores or not. I can't remember. Hmm. And I saw someone on Twitter saying that if this season of Eccentric Family does really well, they might make a third season covering like the Great Tengu War. And I know absolutely nothing about this, but that sounds amazing. Um, do we really want to see that? Yes, I want to see a great Tango War. This sounds great. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't know about this. <laughs> you don't have to watch if you don't want to. <laughs> so yeah, I unless you have other thoughts about the season. Not yet. Not yet. Then yeah, um, I got nothing else. I think. Mm-hmm. So if you guys want to find out more about my thoughts of things in general and slash or see a picture of me helping shear a goat, you can find me on Twitter at Wonder Dreamer. Make sure you take out the uh, e. Yeah. Uh, towards the at the end of the dreamer. Yep. Part. Take out the e and the g. And maybe some other letters, because when I was putting my usual handle into Twitter, I ran up against our character limit. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, by the way, how was the new Twitter app? Um, have you been using the new Twitter? Have you been enjoying the, enjoying the new Twitter? Uh, you mean the one where the replies got really weird? The replies get really weird. Um, Aesthetically, it's not very pleasing. The look of the, like, you can barely, t- like, they removed the, I mean, I guess it was nice of them to remove the, the usernames. In the conversation, except the fact that you can't actually tell sometimes. <laughs> I've heard rumors to... you can have like an insane number of people to reply to now, like a hundred or a thousand at a time. It reminds me that yeah, like for a while I was part of like this Skype club um, on anime Twitter, and we would watch stuff. And this was before you could um, DM multiple people at once. So we would have like these tweet chains of like fifteen people in there, and we'd be like, "Tonight, nine p.m." And people would be looking at us, being like why are you guys doing this? It's like, this is our best option, so... I feel like someone at Twitter must have seen what we were doing and go, we need to help these guys out. And now you can add all the people you want on Twitter. You should also add Justin. Yeah, I am on Twitter at Kami underscore Nomi, and I will leave you with this. Handshakers, it was a pleasure not hearing about you since I last talked about you. Goodbye. (laughs) You wiped your hands of handshakers. It is, it is, I, I, I'm going to assume it would be one of the, the animes people will forget, like, even six months from now.
Melissa Even the people who I saw who like handshakers were like, guys, don't watch this, so... <laughs> Hopefully that's not something we'll be saying about any of the shows this season. Yeah, oh no, there'll probably be... Well, I don't know if it'd be quite as bad, but we'll, there'll probably be a few. That's just the nature of the beast. Mm-hmm. The anime beast. Now, yeah, um... Yep, um... Please, uh... Let us know how we're doing. Go to iTunes, rate and review us there. Give us five stars or four stars. I'm I'm generous. Um, let us know in the comment section on our site, theosg.com, on our specific posts. Anything you have questions for? Any responses to what we said? Anything you want us to talk about? Because we can have opinions on basically anything. Yes, basically anything. Even if um, it involves the sky. For some random reason, I, I have opinions on Shinkai size about which ones I think are the best. I can talk about that. Um, I think I'd rather talk about his foot. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't think I want to talk about his foots. Um, I mean, you've already done that, so. Yeah, that is that is very true. Um, but yeah, that anything you want, ask them. We will try to answer them. Okay, until next time, that guys. Then bye. And with that, see you guys later. <laughs>